Okay, so I thought I'd give you guys a quick update on a couple of things. I think uh, some of you have already seen the bottom cover mod that I did. I uh, posted some photos in the forum. Uh, basically what the problem was, um, from what I could see, is that the two fans are underneath the cover here and here. Um, there's less than a quarter of an inch. There's like maybe between an eighth and a quarter inch space between the cover and the fans. So basically, um, airflow is being blocked off. The only way it can get air is to pull it in sideways from these vents here across into the fans and then out the back. Um, but there's very limited space. Uh, you can kind of see through this grill that I put here. Um, it's almost touching. So the original bottom cover looks just like this here. So as you can see, there's nothing as far as uh, ventilation for those fans. So what I did was I just measured from uh, the edge of the chassis where the cover uh, meets with it to the center of the fan and then from the back edge of the, the chassis to the center of the fan, marked it with an X and then I used a two inch hole saw. Um, I, now the fans are staggered. This one's a little bit offset in the hole. That one's perfectly centered. Um, that's the video card or GPU fan over here. It's a CPU fan. I measured for the GPU fan and got that hole centered perfectly. Had I done the measurement on each side, the holes would have been staggered. Um, this still provides adequate improvement in airflow. I think it looks better than if the holes were in different places on the bottom cover. So anyway, that's how they look. It would look a lot nicer if it had grills like this over here that matched, but still, the you know, round hole's not a bad look. Um, this has a lot of square corners and ang angles on it, not a lot of curves, so maybe a little bit out of place, but overall I think it doesn't look bad. Now the question came up when I shared that information of, you know, some people give way too much credit, I think, to uh, MSI or any other OEM that they put enough thought into the design of a machine, saying, well, other components are going to get too hot, that kind of thing. The, the things that would get hot would be the memory modules. Those are located right here next to the subwoofer. And the M.2 drives, they've got a 960 Pro in this one, and a SanDisk X400 in the one right next to it. Hard drives over here, and there's really no ventilation for those things. With the fans pulling air from here over, they might pull a little bit of air through here. I'm thinking not much. But to prove that theory, to see if my mod maybe helps the CPU and GPU, but hurts the RAM and the drives, we'll put that to the test. So stay tuned as we uh, walk through this together. Those that haven't already seen my other videos of the teardown of this little monster book, um, I mentioned that the uh, M.2 drives are right here in the front. There are some small vent holes here, but if you look at the way this is made, if this bottom cover is almost touching, you're gonna have a, uh, you're gonna have a severe restriction in airflow. So it would have to pull air through these small holes or slots in the front across the uh, N.2 drives, across the memory modules, and then into the into the fan and then out the back realistically i don't see that happening um, there are no vents over here for the hard drive this is a two and a half inch uh, two terabyte hard drive that i have here and you've got the battery that's blocking the path of air i mean maybe it's a stretch in my mind that Putting those holes in the cover is going to affect any of this stuff in the chassis. I don't think the OEM put that kind of thought into it. And uh, we're going to find out in a few minutes whether, if they did, whether it was a theory or whether it actually um, worked properly in practical execution. So let's find out together as we explore that. Uh, one observation. Um, some of you may have seen some of the pictures I posted. Um, see this little little red and black wire right here. The CMOS battery is located on the other side of the motherboard. 
if you're doing any kind of overclocking and tweaking RAM settings and that kind of thing, um, if you're not able to clear NVRAM, you may make your machine unbootable. And to fix that, what you're going to have to do is uh, take out the CPU and the GPU and the fans. You're going to have to take out all the screws all the way around the perimeter of this. Not, it's not a huge task. It's not hard to do. But whenever all you need to do is clear NVRAM, it's a pain in the butt. So you'd have to take out all the screws around the outside. You have to take out the three screws in the motherboard and then lift the motherboard out, unplug the CMOS battery, put it all back together again, repaste your CPU and GPU, all just to clear the NVRAM. Well, that's sorry, that's stupid. So, what I did is I fabricated uh, an extension cable and it fits nicely underneath, right underneath the uh, M.2 drive there. Um, so I just plugged it in on the bottom side of the motherboard and uh, you know, you've got the CMOS battery right here. It's got an inline plug-in connection. You can't see it right now. Um, I'll, zip this, I'll zip this out so you can look at it closer. But if I need to clear NVRAM, all I gotta do is take the bottom cover off, unplug the CMOS battery for a couple of seconds and plug it back in. No fuss, no muss, and I don't have to worry about tearing the thing apart that battery should have been put on the side of the motherboard anyway so I bought the parts off of eBay and it was less than two bucks including shipping coming from China for enough to make uh, like ten of those extension cables so let me show you what that looks like okay so I just took that little x400 drive out so here we've got it um, here's my extension cable so I just coil it up, set it right underneath there. Pretty easy. Clear that NVRAM with no trouble at all. So another thing that I put to the test, um, and this came from Eurocom, this uh, 960 Pro, just bare with no cooler. Um, they had a couple of thick thermal pads stacked underneath it to help transfer heat to the motherboard. Um, I never really checked the temperatures of the uh, 960 Pro before, but I saw this cooler for sale on uh, Newegg and thought, well, that looks nice. Uh, so I bought one and then stuck it in. I had to use a little bit thinner second pad because it was too thick with the cooler, but I put it all back together. And before I put that cooler on there, the temps on top of the... Uh, Sorry for the wiggle in the video, I'm holding the phone in my hand right now. The temps on top of the uh, palm rest right here, directly above these drives, was just awful. Felt super hot all the time. I put this cooler on, and I think it actually made it worse. If anything, it was trapping the heat. Um, this, These thick aluminum plates were storing it up, and it was pushing it right through these pads directly onto the palm rest and the palm rest has a metal surface on it it's not plastic so it was getting noticeably hot I wouldn't say uncomfortable but a little bit annoying and noticeable so what I did was I went ahead and left the cooler on I had also put a couple of pads blue ones of my own on this uh, Sandic disk x400 and that just made it worse um, it came with just this one drive I added this one and to put the pads, the palm rest is getting even hotter. So to test my theory, um, I was thinking that airflow was the problem. Putting those pads there, not only transferring heat to the uh, touchpad surface, but also um, restricted airflow because air can't get to both sides of the drives. And it was just storing it up with this cooler, um, almost like you know a heat sink, so to speak. But um, it wasn't shedding the heat, so I'm going to test that too. I'm going to run some tests on the thermals, and you'll see uh, what it's like just with this cooler and no thermal pad underneath. As you can see, I just coiled that, coiled that up, and I got it laying right there, and that fits real nicely right underneath the M.2 drive. No clearance problems or anything. Um, you probably noticed that I have my uh, BIOS chip mounted in the socket. 
That makes it nice. That's the only way I was actually able to clear NVRAM experiment with, experimenting with overclock settings without pulling the motherboard. So I would just uh, pull that chip out of there, let it settle a few minutes and put it back in. So again, sorry for the wiggly camera. I'm holding it with my hands, but uh, let's go ahead and start with the thermal testing. So to do all this uh, testing, thermal testing, I ran a number of different benchmarks. Um, throughout all the benchmarks that I've done for this test, the CPU is set at 4.7 gigahertz. That's with core voltage set at 1.15 volts. Cache is locked at 4.2 gigahertz with 1.101 volts on cache. Power limits one and two are set to 160 watts. And I've set those in the BIOS um, but I, I will also uh, show you how I uh, set that up in throttle stop. You can't change the cache voltage in the BIOS, so you'll have to use throttle stop. So if you open up throttle stop here, I've selected profile 4, that's my lowest overclock. And as you go through these different radio buttons, you can set the values that correspond with the window uh, pane information on the right. Uh, apply the voltage immediately when you close it so you just click through there and set those voltage values that I just mentioned as well as your multipliers on the power limits button you can also set here I've got 180 watts set on each power limit 1 and 2 and then the, the primary plain volt, uh, wattage set as well so as I go through these benchmarks initially I'll test with uh, Cinebench and uh, only the CPU will be overclocked at Cinebench Heaven and W Prime. And then I will do a couple of benchmarks with Fire Strike and Skydiver with the GPU overclocked as well. Um, and for the purpose of this test, I've overclocked the GPU by an extra 215 on the core and 600 on the memory. Uh, that works out to about 20. Uh, 2025 megahertz or 2.025 gigahertz on the core and uh, that's like uh, 2800 um, base memory clock on the memory you can set the values in uh, MSI afterburner so what I did was I ran these tests with the original bottom cover that does not have the extra holes and then I repeated the tests again uh, with the other cover that has the holes added for improved ventilation. And at the end I uh, follow up those tests with uh, a check on the thermals for the memory as well as the 960 Pro SSD with the original cover versus the modified lower cover. So with the CPU only overclocked I ran uh, three tests. The first three tests of Cinebench Heaven and W Prime 1024M were with the original lower cover. Those were followed uh, later by tests with the modified lower cover to compare temperatures. We see with Cinebench with the modified cover it improved the temps from 92 to 95. With Heaven they improved from 88 to 82. And with W Prime 1024M a small improvement from 97 to 98. You can see in all cases the benchmark scores uh, improved as well and in several cases with the uh, original lower cover the CPU got hot enough to encounter thermal throttling which contributed to the lower benchmark scores of, of course. So um, as I moved on to overclock the GPU as well um, we saw similar results with the uh, modded cover the CPU t temps improved from 80, uh, 87 to 84 in Fire Strike and from 94 to 89 in Skydiver. Likewise, GPU scores uh, were improved from 80 to 76 and 81 to 77, respectively, between Fire Strike and Skydiver. We also saw that there was a, a higher power draw with the improved temps. As the voltages went up, the power draw went down. Um, which also contributed to lower scores. So we saw uh, a small improvement in scores there as well. So the last myth that I wanted to debunk was that the lower cover mod 
would have an adverse effect on other components in the system and you can see that that's not the case. Um, I had different starting temperatures that I wasn't really able to control but in both cases with uh, the RAM thermals as well as the Samsung 960 Pro thermals the increase from the starting point to the end of the benchmark was less with the modded cover so we can throw that out the window there uh, had no adverse effect on the other components in the system with the modified channel of air going through the chassis so there we have it folks down and dirty i appreciated the opportunity to show you that this uh, bottom cover mod did make a small improvement in the cpu and gpu temperatures without any adverse effect on the other components if you liked this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.